The 90s were a time for innovation, especially in electronics and video games, and the Virtual Boy was supposed to be one of those. But some things went wrong, there was a lot of missteps, and the question remains, why exactly did it fail? Well, let's take a look at that today. The Virtual Boy was released in July 1995 in Japan. And less than a month later in the United States in August 1995. Being a 32-bit console, it was supposed to hold gamers over until the arrival of the 64-bit Nintendo 64 console in 1996. Nintendo advertised this heavily and they pushed it as hard as they could. And, well, it was dead on arrival. Of course, the Virtual Boy launched at $179.95 and later was reduced and reduced and reduced. But a lot of major retailers carried them, including Best Buy, Hills, Toys R Us, Target, Walmart, Sears, and pretty much every other major one around. And of course, they ran contests, uh, NBC um, partnering with Nintendo and Blockbuster Video to promote sweepstakes uh, to not only uh, convince people to buy them, uh, but to enter the contest to, uh, you know, to win one of these or even get a grand prize, as you can see here, to um, see a real live VIP trip of Hollywood. So they were pretty, you know, that into trying to convince people to you know, really get into the Virtual Boy, but a lot of problems plagued it, and I think I know, well, I don't only think, I know why uh, it failed, and here's why. The first fatal flaw of the Virtual Boy, which pretty much caused it to fail, was the, the display itself. It would cause headaches, and you couldn't use it for more than 15, 20 minutes before you started getting an extreme headache and had to quit using it. And, of course, another reason is the display. It wasn't in color. It just showed red. Just red. Another was basically the power source itself, which the Virtual Boy took six AA batteries to work. And, well, you could substitute it for a power adapter, but, you know, do you really have to? I mean, it should have been in the first place, but if you're going to actually wear the thing, Whoa, so much, yeah. Of course, on a positive note, the Virtual Boy controller did later inspire the look and the feel of the Nintendo 64 controller, which, if you can call that positive, because some people hate the 64 controller and others love it. And another one was the whole portability of the thing. Of course, they sold a set where you could actually wear it on your head and walk around and play it, but of course you would run into walls, well, that's still our problem today with modern VR, which is slowly uh, becoming popular and has been since at least 2013. And, uh, of course, to play it, if you didn't have the thing that went on your head to hold it to your head, you had to lean over to play it on a table using this little stand. And that definitely caused a lot of neck injuries. So, all in all, The Virtual Boy is a cautionary tale of what you can and what you can't do. Of course, the world was not ready for VR, and VR was very popular, especially in science fiction in the 1990s. Well, especially the early to mid-1990s. Of course, like I said earlier, around 2013, virtual reality and virtual reality headsets slowly started becoming popular again. And, well you know the rest of the story. So that is why the Virtual Boy failed. Of course, there's a lot of other factors, and it would literally take several episodes to explain why in depth and in detail, but we're just going to stick to this short little video. So here's the question. Did you own a Virtual Boy, or do you still own a Virtual Boy, or do you want to buy one? Um, let us know in the comments down below. And also tell us some of your stories about owning the Virtual Boy, uh, whether they were good or bad. So that's our video for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the bell if you want notifications of when we do more awesome videos. And until next time, I'll see ya.